This episode of the Sloopcast is brought to you by the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company is an Ohio-based company where they usually say, our seasoning will take your barbecue from good to great. With great seasonings such as the Brits Blend, the Sonoran Heat, the Two Border, the S&P Bud, you can't go wrong with any of these seasonings that the Mad Canadian has over at his site, the Mad the Mad Canadian BBQ.com. That is the Mad Canadian BBQ.com. Be sure to check out his three box sets that he has available there. He has the Sweet Heat, the Just Send It, and the Whole Hog, which is each of the each of the seasonings that the Mad Canadian has over at his website. And for even more of a discount, use the promo code SLOOPCAST10 at checkout for 10% off your entire order. That is SLOOPCAST10. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, where he has your butt covered. This episode of the Sloopcast also brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Kyle, the Iron Bean Coffee Company is an micro roaster. That that that's you know it's like a micro brewery, but it's a micro roaster. We're we're working on the, we're working on the same level here, and that's actually kinda uh, one of the reasons why I like Iron Bean as much as I do. Is they kind of have like a a micro brewery feel to them like a lot of the micro roasters and my dog uh they're very sort of like snooty or whatever else but like this is this is what iron beans about (laughs) you know it's sort of it's more of a micro brewery attitude from a micro roaster hey lg you're being very rude right now i'm talking about the sponsor they pay us and you're being very rude right now. He helps buy food for you. You're being very rude. <laughs> Dogs. Um, micro roaster uh, with like, like I said, like a micro brewery attitude. Uh, dude's awesome. He runs the company. Ohioan, former Marine, veteran. And again, we're, we're supporting an Ohio based company. We're supporting a veteran uh, and by the way, it's, it's a, it's a literal mom and pop shop. Uh, he and his wife run iron bean coffee. Um, you can get, uh, gift cards for Christmas and you can, you know, cause like if you, if you're not a coffee snob, but you know, you have a coffee snob in your family or that's a, your friend, you don't necessarily know what kind of coffee they like. You can get them a, you, you can get them a gift card. You have free shipping over $50. Maybe take a wild guess and then a gift card. That would be my uh, recommendation for you. And you can find all of that at ironbeancoffee.com. That's Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. What's up, YouTube? N- now LG is quiet. Of course. Of course. You know... The thing is, is that she was laying on this pillow, right? I, I, I'm, I'm flipped. It's hard to do this when your camera's flipped. She was laying right here for the, well, we're only talking to you two people right now. So I even like adjust, cause she was laying there looking super cute. I even adjusted the camera cause I thought, you know what? The YouTube people want to see how cute LG's being right now. And uh, then she decided to go bark at the FedEx guy. I think maybe, maybe UPS. I heard, a, I heard a big truck and that's normally the type of anger she reserves for the delivery folk. <sighs> so dogs. dogs. <clears throat> All right. Uh, are we, uh, let's, let's rejoin our audio listeners. Yes. We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? I'm doing all right today. How are you, Jared? Fine, I guess. I'm, you know, it's it's 2020, and it just kind of is what it is right now. That's... 2020 is going to 2020, I guess. 2020 is going to 2020. Viruses are going to virus... And uh, we all knew we were on borrowed time. Uh, We've been saying for a while now that Ohio State was not going to play all of these games. And, you know, we sort of hoped that it was going to be more like Maryland, where it was the other team. 
and less like what's currently happening where it's Ohio State. But that that's what's happening. And first and foremost, I just want to say no one's to blame. Like, there's probably a patient zero on the team, and it doesn't matter. Uh, if you don't know, Franklin County's infection rates, or whatever the correct terminology is, is enormous right now. It's terrible. Um, and there's all sorts of people out there, probably, I, and I know because I see them, they're on Twitter, they're on the message boards. And you're like, you know, who did this? Who's being irresponsible? Da, 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 da. Like, it's a highly infectious virus, and it's going to do what it's going to do. And like I said, Franklin County is a mess right now. If For anyone who doesn't know, that's, that's Columbus, that's Ohio State, that's we're in Franklin County. And it's, it's a mess right now. As a county, we are a mess right now. And, you know, you might want to try and blame a player or blame a coach or blame a this or blame a that. But, like, it could be as simple as got it, getting it at the grocery store, getting it from a freaking gas pump for all I know when the infection rate is this bad. It's, it's, it was just kind of bound to happen. And it, it unfortunately has happened. And that's, that's what, what's, you know, that's, that's the reality we're living in right now. And, and there's I, I been a the, lot of missteps by a lot of people f- as a society, as a government, as an everything that has sort of led all of this to be the way it is mm-hmm. and to try and blame a 17 year old football player is uh, backwards <laughs> and wrong. And I, th- I think the, the biggest thing with this, in my opinion, is how how do you respond when you find out someone in the whack, yeah, uh, has the virus? And I think how Ohio State handled this was that they wanted it, they want to stop this right in its track, try to prevent any more people to catch it. Uh, could they have played this weekend? Yeah, they probably could have. But I think it's by Big Ten rules they could by have. Big Ten by Big Ten rules they could have played, but I think they were looking at the the long term of the program. Maybe they could have played this weekend, but at the risk of maybe the final two three games of the year, I, I think there I think there were in my opinion were willing to. I'm not going to say take the risk. I think they I think they are wanting to cancel this game and hope that they have a better chance to play next weekend and yeah. then the weekend after that. Yeah, uh, we still don't know who the players are. Uh, we still don't actually know how many players. There was the initial report that came out on Wednesday that there were infections. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of reports out there at this point put that number at about eight players. Mm-hmm. But but then we found out Friday morning. No, it wasn't Friday morning. It was Friday early afternoon that Coach Day, yeah, had the virus, and we we're like, oh, okay. Well, yep. then here comes Larry Johnson. Yep. Larry Johnson was going to take the take the realm bit or take the helm there and drive and then just drive this or pretty much just cruise this yeah this football program to victory for the weekend. And a lot of hype with Larry Johnson being being an African American, being the first head coach African American at Ohio State. Yep. A lot of hype around that. And I was all I'm all for that. But then as the as the sun was setting Friday night, Friday evening, there was a lot more tension, a lot more reports coming around. And then it wasn't well, until it originally wasn't until, the team was gonna fly out. Friday yeah, night. Yeah, they were going to fly out. They were going to originally, the original plane was flying out Friday evening. They held off on that to fly Saturday morning because they wanted to do one last batch of tests, see if there's anybody else. And unfortunately, there were more positive tests. I didn't see any numbers or anything, but don't care to really put out any numbers at, at this point. But anyway, there's there was more positive. 
more than that they were willing to accept. And they just said, you know, don't want to take the risk of uh, like what Clemson did, flying somebody to a different university. Yeah. And potentially infecting their other players, their facilities, uh, faculty, whatever the case may be. Ohio State did not want to take that chance. But, but also your own players and like, mm-hmm. yeah, I, you're, I'm, you're I'm in not a, a, pl- you're in a plane yeah. with everybody else. Yep. yep. And like, I'm an Ohio state podcaster and, and not a doctor and being an Ohio state podcaster in no way um, qualifies me to talk about uh, an infectious disease. So uh, I, I don't talk about infectious diseases. Yeah. yeah. If anyone's wondering, yes, that was shots fired. Um, so I, I, I know that like, you don't just get the virus. If you get the virus it like, so again, I don't, I don't, I'm not a doctor. I'm not going to pretend to be one, but from what little I know, I, I do know that like, if you catch the virus at three o'clock on a Friday and then you take the COVID test at three fifteen on a Friday is <laughs> you're not going to pop positive. It's in your system. You're now a carrier, but you're not going to pop positive on the test yet. So even then you had to acknowledge that there were people who would have been potentially been getting on that plane in that locker room on that field who were COVID positive even if the test weren't going to show it. Yep. Which is why Monday is very crucial as we'll find out sometime Monday, if there's any more positives and this is really going to tell the future for pretty much the rest of the season here. This is Monday, sometime Monday, maybe even pushing it later to Tuesday is going to ultimately decide the rest of the season for this football team. And as we sit here recording this at 3.15 p.m. on a Sunday afternoon, we waited till after the Ohio State basketball game just in case we actually would find time to talk about it um, outside of all the other virus stuff. But um, by the basketball team looked uh, looked bad, but they won, so it's fine. It's, it's all good. By the way, let's do a quick basketball aside before we get too deep into it. Um, can we can we play all of the uh, basketball games in the Covell Center during the pan- during the pandemic? Like, uh, why why bother with the big cavernous Schottenstein Center with no people in it? I loved I loved I loved but, the um, how how they um, redid redid that. It, it looks really good. Redid it? You mean did it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> um. You know, may, maybe let's let's pick up the basketball court, you know, so we get some actual Ohio State branding mm-hmm. on the court. So maybe we can bring some court pieces over from the it's just down the road. Uh, just bring some court pieces down, maybe so we can get some actual Ohio State branding yep. on the court. But outside of that, yeah, um, let's play. Well, in that. Washington looked good yeah. uh, for the most part. I think he was the one that was pretty, uh, pretty solid overall. Uh the, I think the biggest thing here is just the three pointing, the three point shooting for the, for this game was just a, abysmal. They were over, it was like over nine or over 10 in that first half. In fact, they finally hit a few in the second half, but, but boy, that's, <laughs> you're not going to, you're, you're not going to win. You're not going to win many games. And this is one of them here that you actually do win. Uh, by shooting 20% from the three. Uh, question from Stuart underscore E4 US vet. What improvements does the basketball team need to make to look like a possible contender in the big 10 conference? Uh, two, th- couple of things. One, their defense needs to improve when they do the ball, when they're doing, uh, when they're doing switching during, um, during picks on defense, they got to get better at that. They got to get better at communication, that communication there. There was way too many times when there was too much separation from the defender to uh, somebody on the other team there. They need to do better on that. 
they, they did better free throwing free throw. They were 79% free throw. So that's improved. Yep. Okay. But the second thing is you got to hit the, you got to hit those three. Some of those, some of those shots, you were wide open. You got to, you got to start knocking down those. I think if you start improving on those two things, better defense on those, um, on those pick and rolls and improving on your three point shooting, you're, you're going to have a shot. Stay healthy. <laughs> yeah. And stay healthy. That's uh, survive, survive this season. That's, that's how. Uh, yep. basketball should be, uh, lucky enough to still be going when the vaccines start hitting the general public. So that will help. Yes. Now, uh, uh back, so back to the virus. Well, back, I was just going to, yep, I was just yep, going to yep. say the, the final, the next games here, I would just say for this week here. So how uh, state plays Tuesday, I think it's Tuesday, it is Wednesday. Wednesday play they play Moorhead State, so that's good. That's good, a good test. I know Moorhead State is zero and two to start the year, but Moorhead State's a team that a lot of people know. And then they play Alabama A and M on Saturday. All right, uh, back back to football and viruses and stuff. I sent out a a tweet at some point, uh, you know, with Thanksgiving and also just generally twenty twenty. I don't remember what day it was, but essentially saying unless rules get changed and unless dates start getting pushed back, it's over. It's done. This is it for Ohio state. And that's how I felt at the time. Um, I sit here now maybe wondering if that was a tad extreme. Um, I think there exists a possibility that Ohio state goes to the playoffs um, I don't think that's a high probability. Uh, I, I would say equal to Ohio state going to the playoffs. Like if that's a put put, I'm not going to put a percentage on it, but put a percentage on it equal to that percentage is we don't see Ohio state on the field again until September against Minnesota. I think that is also a very real possibility. Um, and I'm, those are the two far ends of the spectrum. And I'm not saying it's either or. And again, I've already said a few times now that I also don't believe that based on the knowledge that Kyle and I have at 3.20 p.m. on a Sunday afternoon, November 29th, based on the info we have right this second, I don't feel like either of those scenarios are likely yet. Now, Monday, Tuesday, once we start getting more tests done and more test results back, maybe we're feeling better. Maybe we're feeling worse. Um, I, I, I just, I just don't know. There is a possibility we've seen the end of Ohio state this season. Uh, and, it, and it sucks thinking about that. It, it really does because of all the hype and what we know from this team and the anticipation and expectation of this team. Uh, yeah, we were all really looking forward to seeing what this team can do. And we saw a glimpse of that. We saw how how great, minus, minus uh, the first half of one game, how how good how great Justin Fields looked. Yeah. How great the wide receivers looked. How how good the offensive line looked and the improvement from the running backs that we've seen each each game throughout the throughout this season. And how the and how the front seven on the defense looked really good. And I know we sat here for Gosh, yeah. it, it feels like almost every year since we've done the started doing the podcast here, linebackers always seem to be the the Achilles heel on the defense, and they they appear to be one of the the strongest parts of this defense too. Yeah, I all, all of that. Uh, of course, the defensive backs are normally one of the most solid parts, and they've not been this year. Um, mm -hmm. Reason we went into a lot of detail on on. Uh, two episodes ago, you know, you, you, they lost seven people, three of them unexpected. 
<laughs> one injury and two guys are in prison or potentially headed in that direction. And so you, you lose three guys who you weren't planning on missing three guys to the NFL and a, a seventh player to Rutgers. Mm-hmm. And in retrospect, I don't know why any of us thought the secondary was going to be any damn good uh, in retrospect. And well, of course I, we I, didn't I, know, we didn't know about Cam Brown during the off season. We didn't, you know, we lost him doing Achilles in the first second game. I forget. Um, so yeah, you, you have a young secondary and then you lose another player. And now you're potentially losing even more players out of that secondary based on who is and who isn't infected. And mm-hmm. Ohio state has stated and they, there was press availability on, on Sunday or excuse me on Saturday. I can't keep track of my days for anything right now on Saturday with uh, Gene Smith, Ryan day and the, uh, the doctor at Ohio state, whose name is um, escape. Who's uh, escaping me at the moment. Um, but basically they said they're going to do everything they can to play against Michigan state. And, I get it. I almost kind of want to say don't um, because, and again, they probably, they, they not probably, they absolutely know who may or may not be available from a personnel standpoint. And Michigan state's a bad football team. Don't get me wrong. Yes. They beat Northwestern. Uh, if you watched that game, uh, you know that it's not because Michigan state played exceedingly well, like Northwestern looked like crap. Uh, Ohio state could beat Michigan state with nothing but backups. And we might get to test that. <laughs> I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But also am I <laughs> like, cause we don't know. We don't know. We don't know. We really don't know. I mean, there's a lot of speculation of who, is and isn't or may not um, be one of those players, but and Kyle, nobody really knows. And Kyle and I have names, but we don't know. We don't know. Like I, it's, it's irresponsible to share any of that. It's all yep. rumor and crap. Um, so not, not sharing any of that. The, the only thing I'm really willing to say right now is like, not Justin Fields, like Justin Fields is, is, is healthy. Yeah. Um, well, and, and Sean Wade's dad came out too and said his his son wasn't either so there's two there's two there's the only two we'll say that doesn't <laughs> <laughs> all right well, uh, about 110 left to go yes uh let's see you mentioned northwestern losing to michigan state alabama clemson dominating in their their <laughs> games there um i think i think those are more of just like statement games saying yeah we're that damn good and I, I really think at this point, you, you got your four teams right now. The, the top four right now. I, th- I think those are your best four teams in the country. Are, are we including Ohio State in that right yes. now? Yes. Okay. Uh, so because, Okay. Yes. I mean, you look, yes. Ohio State looked bad in the Indiana no, game. No, 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 no. That's not what I'm saying. Oh. Um, I, I do think Ohio State is, it, it, with all their players, Let's let's put that little bow on this. With all of their players, Ohio State is I I honestly believe the second or third best team in the country. Now, can you convince the playoff committee of that if you only have four five wins? Your oh, best that's the discussion we're gonna hear all week, Jared. And and it probably helps Ohio State as ridiculous as this sounds that Northwestern lost this weekend because like if you're looking for a big 10 representative, the Northwestern could have won the big 10 and won the big 10 undefeated because Ohio state might not have the six required games to get into the big 10 championship game. So you have Northwestern potentially, and of course they, they have lost, but before we knew that you potentially have Northwestern, going undefeated defeating Indiana, Maryland, Maryland. 
uh, in the Big Ten championship game and being the Big Ten champion. It's like 1995, 96. When was that? Uh, all over again when Northwestern got to go to the Rose Bowl just because they didn't play Ohio State that year. Um, it's uh, it's all a mess, and we don't have answers. I wish I had answers for you. I wish I had answers for me. Screw you. <laughs> <laughs> Screw you guys. I wish I had answers for me. Mm-hmm. Again, there there exists two far ends of this spectrum. Yep. And the, for, the fourth team here, Notre Dame. Yeah, they looked good, but they, they did struggle against against UNC. Uh, they did play a lot better in the second half, but I, I, I agree with you, Jared. I think, I think at this point, Ohio State's, I'll, I'll just, I'll just say the, yeah, the, the third, second best team right now. Per Vegas. Uh, if, if you do the whole, if they played on a neutral field thing, Ohio State's ranked number two, they'd be, uh, I think it was a five, 5.5, Five and a half point dog to Alabama. They would be, I believe, oh, something like a one or a two point favorite over Clemson right now. And maybe some, and I forget what the number was for for Notre Dame. Ohio State's the second best team in the country per Vegas. Okay, I I think that. I mean, I don't know. If, I don't know if they allow those numbers in the in the committee room or not. Um, I, I think we've we're at a point now where Ohio State needs help. There's there exists a playoff scenario in which Ohio State doesn't play again until championship weekend, not in the championship game, and it's against probably Wisconsin as probably the other team from the from the other division who also is maybe the best team from that division, but that, well, they, they lost Northwestern, but, but also isn't going to have enough games to qualify. So Ohio state might pick up a, a semi quality win against Wisconsin B five and O and that's it. That's the conversation that that's your resume. That's your resume heading into, by the way, we might not get to play Michigan this year. We, we, what, wanted what? It, we wanted it at the start of the year. Let's just let's just play that team ten times. Just play that team ten times. Well, that that was our spring plan. If if Ohio <laughs> State had to play in the spring, let's play Michigan ten times. But that that was a whole other thing. You know, revisiting the revisiting the off season, and Kyle and I did our best during the entire off season to. Uh, one of the things he and I talked about that Kyle and I talked about all the time was. We don't want to doom and gloom, but we also don't want to provide people with false hope. So that's, again, what we're attempting to do right now. We don't have answers. We're trying to talk through some scenarios. And that's one of the reasons why I kind of started this show off by saying there are two far ends of the spectrum and they're both possible but unlikely. And the truth, the reality of what ends up happening is going to be somewhere in between. Probably, and unless it's not. So one thing that was brought up over the weekend here, Jared, is the stipulation in the Big Ten of average games, average games per team play. Yeah, for the season. Like if it dropped below a certain amount, then teams who've played a total of X amount of games right. could be eligible too. That that you, so just to. To qualify for the Big Ten Championship game, you have to have played in six games. Mm-hmm. That's 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 one of the rules they, they put into place for this. That number is not actually six. That number is based off of a percentage of da 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 and then at the end of some stupid equation, the number ends up being six. And what mm-hmm. Kyle's saying is, is that if enough Big Ten games are canceled, that can fall to five. I, but I've... It has I, to, I, I believe, not, I believe the math is stupid. It's bad. And it's, it's not. Yeah. I believe. Well, right now, right now through six weeks, 
right now, the team teams are averaging just above five games total. Just above. But that means that a lot more teams have to not play upcoming here. Kyle, really- the math, I think, basically would require almost all of the Big Ten games to be canceled. Yes. Almost all of them, yep. except for the three that Ohio's two. Yep. Well, it, well, yeah, we aren't counting championship weekend. Mm-hmm. So the two that Ohio State are going to play in. Yep. So that's not happening. So the number is six. Kyle, sponsors. Yes. Uh, Iron Bean Coffee. Uh, I talked about why you should check out Iron Bean Coffee. Uh, They're a roast-to-order micro roaster. Uh, The coffee is always fresh. It's not even roasted until you order it. Uh, it's a family run, a, a husband and wife team that runs Iron Bean Coffee. They're based out of Toledo, Ohio, Perrysburg more specifically. Um, and they're great. Like I said, you can get gift cards. You can do a subscribe and save service through the website. And again, it's a veteran owned company. The beans are all fair trade certified and it is uh, all their coffees USDA organic. That's all the great reasons why you should, uh, but there's also some amazing coffees available. Uh, for example, one of their uh, staple roast, one of their flagship roast is the Integrity, uh, the mainstay iron bean selection. Dark roasted makes a great espresso. If you're an espresso drinker, maybe check that out. Now, if you like your coffee dark, though, you might want to check out the Fear No Evil. Uh, it is roasted to the brink of flames. It is a dark, dark black roast. Uh, let's see. There's other dark roasts. There's some flavored coffees. There's the unicorn bag. The unicorn bag is, uh, well, this one's empty, but there's the unicorn bag. Uh, you don't, it's a flavored coffee, but you have no idea what's in it. It's, it's a, it's part of the fun. Uh, there's also a carrot cake an intense blueberry and a mint chocolate chip if you're into flavored coffees. And there's a whole selection of uh, not flavored coffees. Some of their more popular roasts are available in K-Cup. Free shipping over $50. Gift cards available for Christmas. Ironbeancoffee.com. That's Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. This episode is also brought to you by the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Are you struggling to find that special gift for your special your special someone. friend by the way we had a comment a youtube comment uh from one of our female listeners saying what the hell are you talking about i would love it if my husband got <laughs> me mad canadian so once again Kyle and i fail to understand women <laughs> for anyone jared <laughs> for anyone here Med Canadian has three sets here for your special one for the holidays. You have the Sweet Heat, which includes the Four Horsemen, the Discord, the Old Fashioned, and the Tube Border. I like to call this like the Chicken Wing set. Uh, you can you can use the or buy the Just Send It. It's a versatile seasoning. It's it's a very like basic set. Not sure what to get. Go with this set. It's four of the most versatile seasonings that the Mad Canadian has. The S&P Buds, Norin Heat, the Cajun, and the Smoked. Uh, or, or if you want, why not get the whole hog? Purchase the whole hog itself and just right on the table there. <laughs> all seasonings there. You can, you can purchase the whole, the whole hog and get all 14 seasonings that the mad Canadian has. I recommend that one. Yes, I do too. <laughs> also save even more by using the promo code sloopcast 10 sloopcast one zero at checkout for 10% extra off your entire order. Check that out at the mad Canadian BBQ.com. That is the mad Canadian BBQ.com med Canadian barbecue company where they have your butt covered for Christmas. Okay, Kyle. Um, I mean, we're basically just sort of talking about what Ohio State has 
left this season and what it might look like. And uh, mm-hmm. we can run some through some playoff scenarios now. You know, can Ohio does Ohio State have a path to the playoff? Um, I think one thing we need to start making some adjustments on as fans is uh, no longer cheering for for Coach Fick. <laughs> I think Cincinnati potentially now is an is is in the way of Ohio State making the playoff. Um, again, how do you justify an AAC undefeated champion over a non-champion Ohio State team who, at the time of recording, has four wins? And how many more are they actually going to be able to add? I don't know. Um, so in a season filled with chaos, uh, I think we're going to need a bit more. Mm -hmm. Yep. Absolutely. Um, just trying to look here. They have before next week's rankings come out here. I fully anticipate, fully anticipate Clemson to go up ahead of Ohio state, even though Clemson has that loss there in Uh, in Clemson. Clemson's hmm? already ahead of Ohio State. I am looking at the wrong rankings. Thank you. Thank yeah, you, we were we were upset about that before. Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, seeding Ohio State can just at this. We're not worried about seeding anymore. Nope. That's that's not a thing. We're we're just trying to get into the playoff and be healthy. And even then, I really how <laughs> how what happens if you're Ohio State? And you have five games underneath your belt and you're going to play against Alabama. So I don't know if that's best case scenario. I don't know if Ohio state as the fourth seed in the playoff is best case scenario, maybe third, maybe third's a possibility. I wouldn't hold any hope beyond that. Any hope that Ohio state would even bump into number two in the playoffs. Not that, two versus three matters. It's what Jersey color you're wearing. It doesn't really matter, but four seems like the, in a, in the scenario in which Ohio state makes the playoff four seems most likely. Mm -hmm. Now you're going to go up against Bama and Bama's real, real good. It's the one team in the country right now that I feel like is, absolutely genuinely better than Ohio state and Ohio state just hasn't had. I mean, we, we talked about all the games they're missing. They're missing these practices too. Ohio state. We've seen it year in and year out. It's a mark of good coaching is typically better by the end of the year than they were at the beginning of the year. Where is Ohio state in that development right now? It's probably a hell of a lot closer to the beginning of the year than the end. Now it's a it's a pretty old team. It's a pretty veteran team, so that helps. Um, even if Ohio State's secondary was better, even if Ohio State's secondary had improved, they're going to get torched by those Bama wide receivers anyway. There's not a secondary in the country with an answer for Alabama's passing game. So, well, Ohio State would get dominated by Alabama's passing game. Yeah, everyone's going to get everyone. Ohio State versus Alabama. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking. What's, I'm looking what's, here. What's I'm our, looking here. What's our over under on that game? I'm looking at like the the top teams. Uh, Texas A and M already saw firsthand. Yeah. Florida absolutely would. Clemson definitely. absolutely will. Kyle. Yes. Okay. Will. Yeah. Uh, Clemson definitely. We there. Clemson is very. I compared Clemson and Ohio State as like very similar or so much talent. Yes, hi dog. Uh so much talent on the offense. There's a lot of good things happen on defense, but they struggle. Both Clemson and Ohio State do struggle on defense. And could they be could they beat Notre Dame in Alabama? Yeah, they could. But if you do it like ten, like play them ten times, play each other ten times, Alabama will definitely come out on top more more often than either Ohio State or Clemson, though. But yeah, I mean, ultimately, I agree, Jared. Alabama would just destroy all of these 
secondaries that's in the in the top six there. The, there's going to be a lot of points scored in the playoff this year. Uh, mm-hmm. That's especially true if Ohio State gets in. Yes. Uh, Bama is going to put up a ton of points. We already know what Clemson and Trevor Lawrence are capable of. We already know what Justin Fields and the crew of Ohio State wide receivers are capable of. I really think Ohio State's only saving grace here is if the people on the committee, A, are gamblers. <laughs> Maybe. Um, and they see what Vegas says and, and take it seriously. Uh, I Or if they just say, 2020, right? We know Ohio State's the best to put them in. It's going to piss off a lot of people. It's going to piss off a lot of people if a five, four, six win Ohio state team gets in over a one loss, Texas A&M, a one loss, Florida, a one loss zero or zero loss, Cincinnati, a one loss, Oregon who've played a, I don't know. Has Oregon missed any games this year? I don't know. I don't care. Um, <laughs> it's going to piss off a lot of people. Um, no, I don't care. <laughs> I, I really don't care. Um, I just have a hard time seeing it, uh, especially yeah. if Ohio State ends up not playing in more than one additional game. Mm-hmm. You know what I want, Jared? Hmm. I want Team Chaos to roll. Well, this is the year of Team Chaos. I mean, mm-hmm. it, it is... It is what it is. Kyle, let's let's uh let's bring our listeners in on the conversation. Sure. So who do you want to start off with here? Uh I'm I'm a big fan of top to bottom. Okay. <laughs> All right. So Brawley here, he asks is is any, is any give let's start that over. Is any game a given for Indiana if Penix is out moving forward? Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, Penix is out. I heard that. I thought we Okay, misheard that at first. Sorry. Um, Penix is out for Indiana. Uh, <laughs> I just heard something different. That's all I'm saying. The uh, Penix leaves the game. We don't know at this time what that injury is. It looked very Achilles-y, but we don't know. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I... I it's 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 the Big Ten East. It, it's it's what? tough. Well, Indiana is playing their two um, West teams for their final two games here: Wisconsin, mm-hmm. which might get canceled, and Purdue, which might get canceled. I mean, they they're all might get canceled. Um, why 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 Wisconsin is Wisconsin dealing with more outbreaks? Well, they've only played three games. Yeah, but th- not, none of those games that didn't happen happened at the beginning. Not. Yeah. Okay. Well, I don't know. It's. No, I it, it need this game. The Indiana team needs Penix here. So it's. I have a feeling that Indiana could easily lose both of these games if played. If Penix is not playing. Yeah, it, it, Indiana's not a team that can... There, there's not a C.J. Stroud or a Jack Miller sitting on the bench. Mm-hmm. I honestly feel like Ohio State... And again, as far as Kyle and I know, Justin Fields is fine. I just want to reiterate that before I say what I'm about to say. I honestly believe that Ohio State could beat both of the Michigans with uh, C.J. Stroud and or Jack Miller. Mm-hmm. Uh that's how little I think of Michigan state as a football team. And that's how little I think of the secondary at, at Michigan and how much I, th- and how much I do think of Ohio state's wide receivers. Yeah. You know, what's really terrible, Jared, both Northwestern and Indiana. Yeah. They could just not, Oh, you just have more the rest of, of the games canceled. I see. And they'd be in the, championship the conference championship that's a strategy well not necessarily i mean that's that's assuming ohio state doesn't qualify 
Yes. You're making that assumption that yes. Ohio State doesn't qualify, which mm-hmm. we don't know. Uh, Ohio State might qualify. I'm not holding out a ton of hope for it, but it's it's possible. They have to play this week against Michigan State or they don't qualify for the Big Ten Championship game, period. Mm-hmm. I, I saw there was a lot of talk about, like a lot of a lot of Michigan fans like, hmm, hmm, could we really screw over Ohio State here? I, I think the season will already be screwed before Ohio State even gets there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Uh, Stuart underscore E4 US vet. I believe most questions will have to deal with hypotheticals until we figure out what is going on with this, with the program. Hypotheticals is another good name for this episode, but I'll try one. If Ohio state isn't able to compete until week nine, the plus one week, who is the most likely opponent and will they still have an opportunity of a postseason past that? Well, that's, that's, We've been uh, we've been talking like it's going to be Wisconsin, which would be my assumption. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I we don't <clears throat> excuse me, but we don't know that. And uh, as far as there being an opportunity of a postseason, I think that's mostly been what we've been talking about this episode. So I think I think we yep. got you on that one, Stuart. Uh, since the team up north is considering themselves a basketball school, this is still Stuart, by the way. Yes. These a, a lot. Uh, these are all Stuart. <laughs> When we beat them, <laughs> do we humiliate them more than we do when we beat them in football? Uh, n- no, because they're not really a basketball school. They just like to say that because it sounds nicer than we suck at football. Mm-hmm. Because they're two and four right now in football. Yeah. They just, Penn State just got their first one of the season over Michigan. Yeah. <laughs> and by the way, looked significantly better as a football team doing it. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's let's give Stewart a quick break. Uh, let's do a question from Michigan Bucknut. Uh, who do you think will take advantage of the extra year of eligibility? Uh, all the defensive backs. Well, minus Wade. Yeah, minus Wade. <laughs> um, that's really very complicated. Um, because like simply a year of eligibility is not being used. Now there have, we have seen in the past uh, from urban Meyer, not Ryan day yet where players uh, had their four years in the program. Uh, and even though they were redshirted, uh, they still did their senior walk and didn't return the next year. I don't feel like most players do fifth years at Ohio state. Not um, many. It's, it's unless you're, it, unless you're just, unless you're um, JT, you, unless you're JT and you're there for eight plus years. And, and when I, I mean, obviously lots of players do five years at Ohio state, but a lot of what we are as a program is like three or four years because Either you're not cutting it and you're going to transfer, which I think there's going to be a lot of kids transfer. Uh, They'll probably be asked to or encouraged to or or told what the reality of their stay at Ohio State is going to be. And there will be um, a lot of players leave for the NFL. Uh, You're at Ohio State for probably three or four years. That's most offensive linemen different, different to it's different to bring offensive linemen around uh, high character players who have had injury issues. Hilliard and Cooper. I'm looking at you different. So I, I think a lot of how many players are actually going to take advantage of that. I, 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 I don't feel like a lot. I feel like a lot of players are going to sort of, leave one way or another would would be my guess. Ohio State obviously has, or rather the NCAA obviously will figure out what this means from a scholarship limit standpoint. I don't know what the scholarship limit will be for the 2021 season, but it's not going to be a hard 85. I, I don't know how they, I don't know the math they're going to use. I don't know 
what the methodology is, how they're going to count scholarships. I don't know. You you have to you have to yeah, that's that's tough because of this extra year of eligibility that's thrown out as an option. You have to honor that for like the next four years then. Yeah, essentially. I, I think so. Um Yeah, that's I'm I'm really curious to see how the NCAA is gonna handle that. And we'll we'll definitely talk more about that in the off season. Yeah. I, that's, I think sooner is, or later. Yeah. Well, <laughs> they'll release some real convoluted math at some point and we'll attempt to talk about it and mess something up. So yeah. look forward to that during the wasteland. Mm-hmm. All right. By the uh, way, who this really does benefit mm-hmm. Northwestern, Iowa, Wisconsin, these programs that live off of recruiting and developing three-star players. Yes. They're, those teams are going to be nasty because a lot of those, you're giving an extra year of eligibility to development players mm-hmm. at those universities, and they're going to actually be able to take advantage of these additional scholarships. Ohio State's not going to get to take advantage of these additional scholarships in the same way because of the number of players who are going to leave to find playing time elsewhere, whether that yep. be a different university or the NFL. Mm-hmm. Yep. All right. Um, so it, all right. this is a, it's actually a huge disadvantage for Ohio State. It is, yeah. All right. Uh, next up here, Jared, uh, we have Rockasaurus. Uh, he asks us, "What needs to happen to have an Ohio State team without a conference championship to make the playoffs?" What needs to happen to have an Ohio State team without a conference championship make the playoffs? Um, I think we've talked about that a lot yep. already during the episode. Uh, I think it takes the committee again, kind of just shrugging and say 2020 and then just putting Ohio state in and dealing with the backlash that comes from it. Mm-hmm. Cause I don't know how you really honestly justify putting Ohio state in over Cincinnati or like if, if Flor- what if Florida and Alabama, what if Florida wins? That's it. That Ohio State's done, because Florida and Bama are both gonna. It's gonna be an ACC versus SEC challenge. Yep. And the in and with Oregon losing, also last weekend. Yeah. I don't see anybody in the Pac-12. No. There's nobody. I know. I know. There's a few teams that's still undefeated, but. No. No one in the Pac-12 is going to the playoffs. No one in the Big 12 is going to the playoffs. No one other than Ohio State is going to the playoffs for the Big 10. I We all flirted with Northwestern for a second. I never bought into it. For a split second. <laughs> we, all, we, all, we all had that. We, we sort of rubbed her elbow a little bit. It's fine. It's not going to happen. And I'm sure uh, a lot of the news um, the news outlets were really tempted, had a week's worth of Oh yeah, they wanted to talk about all this week oh, when yeah. Northwestern won, but oops, oh yeah, throw that all in the shredder now. Yeah, that's that's done. Northwestern's done. Um, yeah, no, mm-hmm. it's so our conversation now is Ohio State, like three SEC teams, two ACC teams, and then we also have to talk about BYU, and we also have to talk about Cincinnati. So. We have, imagine Notre Dame preventing the first ever independent team from getting into the college football playoff. 2020 bingo card. Who had that one? (laughs) Yes. All right. Um, I think those are all the questions here. I think so. Oh yeah. That last Stewart one is the basketball question I read earlier. Yeah. Um, no, 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 no. Can you give us your best rundown of who will commit to the 21 class and the best guess 22 class, 22 class. No, uh, we don't have near the, the time nor the research, uh, nor the crystal ball to pull that off. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I feel 
real quick on 2022. Hold on. I have some notes in the discord. Um, Ohio State's number one. Yeah. Um, got Caleb in, in Burton. Both. In both How, football pulled, and basketball. Pulled ahead of Bama. How'd pull ahead of Bama in 2021? Oh, I mean, tw- no, I'm talking about 2022 basketball. Ohio State is number one in the 2022 oh. football and 2022 basketball. Okay. We're, <laughs> I was You're about like, to say, we should, st- should still be just a bit behind Bama in the 2021 football. Again, once the Washington is, kids, yeah, once they're, the Washington still, kids commit, that'll be fine. They're about, what is that there? Six and a half points. About six and a half points behind Alabama with just Alabama having two more recruits. Emeka's coming. JTT is, I feel slightly less confident about JTT, but I still feel very confident about JTT. Yep. Um, Emeka's coming. That'll put Ohio State at number one. We'll see what happens with JTT. Um, yeah, so let me let me make my way into my recruiting notes real quick. Uh, Kyle, keep talking for me. I can't scroll and talk at the same time. <laughs> oh, what else? What else? Um, well, I guess I guess this would be a good time for Kyle's corner then. <laughs> oh, whoa! That's you're throwing you're throwing stuff way uh, off. Actually, I probably don't want to because the crew is playing tonight, Jared. So as this is releasing, we don't know, but. Like we mentioned about the the virus going on and all that, it's hit the crew pretty hard too. The crew has seven players unavailable for Sunday night's game. Now, last I looked, two of them were starters. Two of them were starters, yes. Yeah. And also Um, I think there's like two, three or so players from the Blue Jackets also that's unavailable. Franklin, the numbers in Franklin County are terrible right now. Yes. Uh, It's... It's, it's absolutely horrendous. Uh, everyone, please. I don't know if I should say this or not, Kyle, but like, if you're not, if you live in Franklin County, Ohio, and you're not wearing a mask and you haven't been wearing a mask, I'm saying it, it's happening. I remember I, Hey, everyone remember when I was making fun of Clay Travis last week and I said, Hey, you as a fan ruined your football team. Guess what? People who live in Franklin County who like Ohio state and decide that masks aren't important. You contributed to ruining your football team. Just be respectful. Be respectful. I, I, I said it. That's that's what I was right. going to say. All right. What, what uh, did you find, Jared? So 2020, let's, let's talk 2022 real quick. Um, of the players, so the players who are committed are committed. Mm-hmm. So we don't need to run through that. Um, Damani Jackson. Uh, who is a cornerback out of the famed Mater Day High School in California. Um, he recently whittled down his commits or his um, his targets, his, his, his final teams. I, I like Ohio State's chances there a lot. That's, I'm not saying it's a certainty by any means, but I like Ohio State's chances there a lot. Um, I don't want to... I'm just gonna I'm just gonna throw I'm just gonna lightning round through some other 2022 names who I like a lot, but maybe not as much as Jackson, but who I still like a lot. Just some names to keep an eye on. I am not. This is not a prediction of these guys joining Ohio State. These are just some targets who I feel good about. Not great. Not certain. Good. These are some guys I feel good about. 2022 recruits for Ohio State. Uh, Sean Murphy. Um, I have Will Johnson on this list. That's probably no longer true. This list is a little bit old. I haven't updated it in a minute. Um, um, Caden Curry, a uh, guy keeping we're not guy we're keeping an eye on. Nicholas Singleton, and a offensive tackle from Indiana whose last name is Goodwin, and I'm not going to attempt the first name at this time. Uh, let's see. Focusing on the 2021 class, uh, a guy to keep an eye on as LSU continues to fall apart is uh, Rayshon Davis. He's currently committed. He is also from the famed Mater Day High School in California. Uh, he is a four-star linebacker. He is a 24-7 top 50 player. As a guy I feel really good. Not really good. That's a guy who we're keeping an eye on 
uh, potentially coming to Ohio State in the 2021 class. And then, of course, I've already talked about JTT and Emeka Abuka, two guys I feel great about for the 2021 class. Um, is that, I think that's, that's all I'm going to do as far as throwing names out there for the, uh, uncommitted players at this time. I think that's, I think it's all I'm going to do. Scrolling through my list, scrolling through my list. You want some good news, Jared? Keeping an eye on. Yeah, that's all I'm going to, that's all we're going to do for right now. You want some good news? (laughs) Yeah. I'm sure everybody knows of the great Jim or Jimmy Jackson, mm-hmm. former Buckeye great. He is now heading to the National College Basketball Hall of Fame. Nice. It was just announced from um, Ohio State that he will be a member of the 2021 class for the College Basketball Hall of Fame. So congrats to Jimmy Jackson. Uh, And a quick sloop pick update. Kyle and I once again defend our t-shirt honor defeating sun card. Sorry, sun card. No, no no no, anchors up here. No, no anchors for you. All right, uh, Kyle. uh, I think that's it. That's, that's our show for today. That's it. All right, uh, everyone, please check out all of the things. It it only took a pandemic to get us close to an hour. Um, join us in the Discord server. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Um, I I'm, I'm really enjoy it. Uh, if you see me tweeting a lot less, if you see me spending a lot less time in the public social media space, it's because I've been hanging out in the Discord. We're having a lot of fun in there. Come join us because I, uh, I hate Twitter. It's a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Uh, if you join our uh, Patreon at the $3 or higher tier, you get access to the premium channels in Discord. You get access, uh, early access to episodes. Our patrons, by the way, Kyle, got, of course, it was the uh, Indiana, or excuse me, the Illinois preview special, so take it for what it's worth. They actually <laughs> got that episode a full day, actually 25 hours ahead of the public. So that early access, not, not 25, that's, I'm not, I'm not promising that, but, uh, (laughs) normally, yeah, you get early access to episodes. Uh, so that's always cool. Follow us on Twitter. I'm at Sloopcast. Kyle is at Sloopcast Ohio, or excuse me, Sloopcast Kyle. There you go. What the the hell was that? Um, and if you're looking for any of our links, whether it be for t-shirt stores, uh, social media, discord, Patreon. If you're looking for any of those links, YouTube, uh, Apple podcasts, Spotify, whatever. If you're looking for any of those links, uh, visit the sloopcast.com. It's just a landing page, uh, with a bunch of, with a bunch of links on it and you should be able to find whatever you're looking for. Um, so yeah, all of that, uh, Kyle, did you already, did you already waste all of your Kyle's corner stuff? Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> All right. Yes. Go crew. Um, everyone wash your hands, wear your masks, uh, especially if you live in Franklin County. We are struggling. Uh, and uh, Kyle, so that's it. Time for time for outro music. Yes. Let's, feel, let's do it. It, feel, it feels like a real short ending. Like we, we got we got from like the end to like the end really quickly today. Anyway. Uh, yeah. So. Uh, with all of that being said, sure, why not? With all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course support... Oh, I didn't actually say who we were doing for the music. <laughs> That's what I was forgetting. There you go. Boom! Uh, tonight's ending music will be by a band, I think they're Columbus-based, called The Castros. So uh, make sure to check the show notes for information on The Castros, including the name of this song. So, like I said, check the show notes for that. Uh, the show notes also has the master link, the, the sloopcast.com link, uh, that can get you to all the other links. That's why we call it the master link. And, uh, that's it. All right. So with all of that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is the Castro's.
What's up, YouTube? Do, do we need do we need a dog update? That's LG. She's the one that doesn't climb on me. She's the respectful one. <laughs> she doesn't get as much podcast time because she's good, and that's not fair. So we have to give her some podcast time while she just quietly lays on her pillow like a good dog. Apollo, on the other hand, I'm sure is probably laying too close to the fire right now. Mm. Laying a little think, too close to the fireplace. That's that's think another thing we need to say. And I know this is only for on YouTube here, but support your local businesses as well. Yeah, we should we should start doing that. Uh, support your local businesses. I mean, I think that's what I'm saying when I say drink local beer and I get that not everyone drinks beer, but I think, I think the, I, and of course, you know, mad Canadian, Ohio based and iron bean coffee, Ohio based. Like we seek out, you know, Wolf's Ridge, our previous sponsor, Ohio based. Um, and we had, our, we had all, a t-shirt, we had a t-shirt company with Ohio based too. We have an Ohio base. Oh yeah. 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 Oh, I see what you mean now. Yeah. Oh, uh, what was the name of that? It was one of our first sponsors. I have, I have a t-shirt. I'd I have, have to pull it out in there. Hmm? Well, it was, it was an, it was a number. I can't, it was, it was three numbers. It was like, it's like a three and a five in there. I forget, but yeah. Um, Ohio based virtual office systems who we worked with in the past, Ohio based, uh, all, all of our sponsors, every single mm -hmm. one of our sponsors has been Ohio based. Uh, so yeah, support local. That's, I, I feel like even if we have never said during this pandemic that, Hey, go support your local restaurants and shop local and do all that local stuff. Even if we've never specifically said that, I think like our Ohio first message is uh, not a thing that we hide by any means. I mean, our, our non podcast t-shirt company that Kyle and I have is called 7071. The two main <laughs> interstates that run through Ohio for the first time in a long time, Jared Cleveland We'll have a winning record. We'll have a winning season. Did they did they get win number nine today? Win number seven. That that doesn't get a winning. Well, well, I, I, have they had games canceled? I guess normally the mm -hmm. the nine and seven math doesn't necessarily no. work like it like it used to. Like it used to, yeah. So I, uh, you know what, we'll just, whoever you're reading that from, we'll just trust that what they're saying is right. <laughs> All right. So let's, uh, let's rejoin our audio listeners. I enjoy our time with YouTube, by the way, we, this is a much more casual conversation. I don't feel like we can sort of let some audio gaps in. We can not know stuff. I like our casual YouTube time. All right. Let's rejoin our audio listeners. Well, any more of that? Nope, that's <laughs> okay. it. Okay. That that burp just for you, YouTube. <laughs> All right. Once again, I'd like to thank the Castros for ending today's podcast. Kyle, one thing that we were just talking to our YouTube uh, family about was that we're all about Ohio on this on this podcast. We are all about supporting your locals. So even if you aren't an Ohio uh, local person anymore, or maybe ever were, but you're just an Ohio State fan, also support your locals. Like when we say support your local this and support your local that, we might be saying beer and we might be saying music, but we really mean all the things, including your local coffee companies. That's why... Uh, all of our advertisers ever on this show are Ohio based and we're super proud to be doing ad reads for the iron bean coffee company. Iron bean coffee company is a veteran owned premium small batch roast to order company. You can't, you, you, what, what Ohio based veteran owned roast to order small batch organic <laughs> fair trade certified. This company top to bottom is about integrity 
And like, what what else could you possibly want? What else could you po- Well, is it owned by a veteran? Yep. Well, is it owned by uh, a, a, a husband and a wife? Yep. Sure is. Oh, well, yeah, but I, I like to support local. Are, are they are they from Ohio? They sure are. Oh, well, I really like my coffee fresh. Is there coffee? Oh, they don't roast it till until you order it. It can't get any fresher. Oh, well, I'm really worried about like coffee and where it comes from internationally and how the farmers are treated because that can sometimes. Oh, oh, no, no, no. They're fair trade certified. Oh, they check all the boxes, you guys. They check all of the boxes. I, it's why we love having Iron Bean Coffee on this show. It's it's about all the same stuff that Kyle and I are about. And uh, inclu- by the way, and oh, by the way, the coffee is really freaking good. <laughs> oh, by the way, it's really, really, really good coffee. Like, it's really, really good. Uh, and I, I know that's maybe not like the most articulate way of telling you that coffee is good to just say it's really, really good. But I, I'm not I'm not a foodie. I just know what I like, and I I know that this is some of the best coffee I've ever had, period. So you can buy some for yourself and support all of the things that should be supported at ironbeancoffee.com. Once again, that is Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. This episode was also brought to you by the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. But but, but Kyle, we, we said all Ohio. He's Canadian. Nope. He is an Ohio-based company. What? Based out of Cary, Ohio. Cary? Where's just, Cary? Just outside of Finley. Oh, okay. Northwest I, Ohio. Meh. Or I think we might be really stretching it with the just. How far? Just outside of Finley? It is. It's just outside. Just a bit outside. Just a bit. Uh, there's seasonings. Ohio based. He he has he has a bunch of seasonings that are f- from just local in Ohio. He get he gets as I don't all all he can. It's it's not all he can yeah. as much as he can as much from as Ohio. Can. Yes. Uh, so another Ohio based company uh, to to take uh, to to purchase from. Not only that, but if you're in that in that area and you check out his Facebook, you check out his Twitter page, you can catch his food truck as well. He he, he, has, ventured, he, a, he ventured pretty far east this weekend. So even if you're not in the general carry area, you might want to check out his social media to see where that barbecue bus might be next. Mm-hmm. It's an, I've heard from reliable sources. <laughs> the people who birthed you? The people who birthed me. <laughs> <laughs> that it's some pretty good food. And it's it's really good. So check out his check out his um his food truck. Uh can't tell you where it's gonna be. Just check out his social media. He'll tell you where it's gonna be. Or you can or you can just go to his website, the madkidinibbq.com, to purchase the seasonings he uses for his food truck there. Uh not sure what to get. Pick out one of all the of box samples. Just get all of it. You can get the just send it, the sweet heat. Or what Jared said, the whole hog, the whole shebang there, all 14 seasonings. Yeah, it, it's it's. It, I think it's real simple. If there's someone in your life who is uh, just trying to get into cooking maybe for the first time, the just send it. That That's your starter pack. Those are all incredibly versatile. You can put all of that on anything. You got someone who likes some heat. You, we all have that friend who likes to put hot sauce on everything. What's... I was looking at you, Kyle. What's what's that one called again? I forgot the name of that one. The Sweet Heat. The Sweet Heat. I can never remember if it's Sweet Heat. Okay, yeah. The Sweet Heat. And then, of course, if you have someone who's just spends all their time in the kitchen, that's the whole hog right there. Mm-hmm. Be sure to use Sloopcast 10, Sloopcast 10 for 10% extra off your entire order. Med Canadian Barbecue Company, where they have your butt covered for Christmas. <laughs> 